come to the monastery looking for merit. So let's make our merit complete. You've made a donation already. You're observing the precepts. You're sitting here. You're not harming anybody. All that remains is to meditate, bhavana, which means to develop good qualities in the mind. Because it's through the bhavana that the things we've heard and the things we've thought about actually get put into practice, and that's when we really understand them. So focus here on the breath. Watch the breath coming in, going out, and all of a sudden you'll notice that you're not with the breath anymore, you're someplace else. But just keep coming back to the breath until you finally do get established. Because one of the first things you understand is that your mind has not been trained properly enough. It needs more training. If it's wandering off, okay, it's a sign that you need to develop more mindfulness and more alertness. And how do you do that? Well, just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. It becomes more habitual. And that way the mindfulness you've heard about and the concentration you heard about actually appear in your mind. And that's when you really understand them. And there's added discernment that comes from meditation as well. You get a sense of just right. You can hear about it, you know, the principle, okay, just right, not too much effort, not too little effort, not too much pressure on the breath, not too little pressure on the breath. But what, where is that point of just right? It's like eating. How do you know how much food is enough, how much food is too much, how much food is not enough? Where's, where's the right point there? We learn that by eating and then changing the amount you eat and then noticing, okay, this, if I eat so, this much food, it doesn't feel good, I've got to pull back a little bit. But then you pull back too far. You notice the signs of that. And after all, you get to read the signs of how much is too much and how much is too little. That's the kind of discernment that comes from practice, that comes from trying to develop good qualities in the mind. And as you do this, you find you can get to do it more and more efficiently. You begin to notice that certain ways of focusing on the breath take a lot of energy, but they don't give you much energy in return. How about changing the way you focus so that you actually gain energy from the practice? You put in energy, but more energy comes back. That's something else you learn through the practice. These are things that you can write about in books, but you don't really know them just by reading the names. It's like going into your medicine cabinet. You need some medicine for your headache. Well, you can read the labels on the bottles. You may know, okay, this is, this is the painkiller, but you don't really know what painkillers do until you take one. That's the same with the practice. You don't really know the Dharma until you practice it. So this is our opportunity to make our practice of Dharma complete. We've got, vir we've got virtue, concentration, discernment. We've got generosity, virtue, and meditation. And when we want complete results, you have to make the practice complete. And so this is how we develop the discernment that comes from developing the mind. It's the kind of discernment they can't put in books. They try to catch them with books, but it's like trying to catch spirits with books. You flap the book down, but it's gone. In the same way, the, the discernment that comes from the practice is something really special. It's your own discernment that you've developed through the practice. And that's something that doesn't leave you. What you've read about in books you can forget, but the practice you've learned, the, your sense of just right in the practice, that's something that stays with you. And that's how we keep ourselves in the middle way, in the, the way that's just right. It's through testing. Training the mind. That's how we understand.